welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. I have taken a little bit of a hiatus from video making just to get through some work and some other stuff in my life, but overall it's good now. So yeah, let's get back to Super Rugby. So we're in round four already. I've missed a couple of rounds, but I'd just like to get into it, jump right in and go for it. So obviously some big highlights from the weekend. The South African side, 1,000 points for Yankees, Pollard making his 50th test, showing some real experience growth in the South African uh, contingent. And it's, it's promising to see. We need to continue to grow that so we have the depth to compete in the international level later in the year. Obviously, this being a super rugby year, everything is important. So let's let's get right into some of the big games. Okay, so obviously the Crusaders continue to dominate, killing the Chiefs, and it was quite the performance. Um, they, they just know how to put the ball in hand. The Chiefs did try some things. They did have, I feel it was a little bit of a better performance compared to previous weeks. And I think the Crusaders' style probably opened that. I feel always when New Zealand teams take on each other, it almost evolves to a much more running game. Both teams let each other play, and the winner pretty much becomes who can play the game better. So I, you could see that in the Crusaders, and they really showed their skill. What I find amazing is Crusaders still don't have their top team on the field. They're still actually resting a lot of their star players, but still dominating in every facet of the game. So I'm, I'm excited to see what they continue to do. Um, on the other hand, the Chiefs letting Austria and New Zealand down. I feel the Blues and the Chiefs both need to show up as they are bringing the whole conference down. It's actually one of the weakest starts the Super the, the New Zealand teams have had in recent years uh, with I think the most out of the New Zealand log having the most losses out of any log in the tournament so far which is quite shocking as we get into the quarter mark. But we'll see how it goes. I think the Chiefs uh, have a lot of talent that they can bring forward. They just need to find the the, the, the playing style and find the team and find the cohesion they need. So I, I, thought, I don't think it's all said and done for the, the Chiefs. Never write off a New Zealand team, but I think that they definitely need to look inwards. On the other hand, the Crusaders need to continue with the dominance um, and we'll see how it goes. Obviously, I feel there'll be some more challenging games coming up, but they've already taken probably the biggest challenge off the sheet beating the Canes a few weeks ago. So I think for them now, it's just got to continue consistency and hoping sh and making sure that they can uh, blood, continue to blood their players so that their depth is just insane. Uh, the Tars get a win. Oh, sorry to say. The Blues got a win over the Sunwolves, uh, which is something that uh, upset me a little because obviously I play Super Brew and I win for Sunwolves after the beautiful game they had against the, Chief, the Chiefs last week. And I thought that the Blues were in a similar level. But the Blues showed that they have, they, they still got it. They have some strong play, and overall they really did a, good, a strong performance against the Sun Wolf, so a good on them. On the other hand though, I mean that scoreline is actually for me quite, uh, it, it, it shows the power and I mean they were one point off of a bonus point loss at least and it shows the Sun Wolves are really becoming a competing team. Uh, to go on tour in New Zealand and even come that close is outstanding to them so I don't think anything can be taken away from their tour already. They're, this is a, re a tour for records. So well done to them, well done to the Chiefs. I think the Blues Showed that they have something in them, but let's face it, an eight-point win over the Sun Wolves at home isn't boding well for them. We'll see how they do going on in the season. They have some star players, some magic uh, feet, but it just doesn't seem to be uh, growing. I think it's similar to the Chiefs that they have the great uh, talent below them, but when it comes to connecting and finding and putting players into space, they're just not doing it. And I think both the Chiefs and the um, Blues have also an issue with handling. They really are dropping the ball way too often for the style of play they're doing. And it reminds me of the early days of the Lions trying to put on the style New Zealand has uh, perfected. When it comes to, they, they looked good, but whenever they, they just couldn't execute, they couldn't finish the plays. And the problem is on defense or counter attack, they fell apart because they just couldn't get a scramble fast enough. So I think that's something they need to look inwards on and if it's, what, what they can do there. We move on to the Tars. Taking the Reds, I was 28-17, which was a great Australian derby. I enjoy I enjoy Australian derbies. They definitely uh, uh, there's a lot of technical. They they do a lot of a lot more moving of the ball around fast. Although the wet day made for quite a lot of errors. There was a lot of drop balls, so it wasn't the prettiest game I've ever seen. But overall, a, a skillful game, some good tries. Uh, I was I enjoy Falau, so a really good. I enjoyed a lot of the tries. I enjoyed how it's going, and a red side also some good performances. Um, I hope that the error prone was just because of the weather, and not because of the style that they're used to, that they're actually their the, 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 the conditioning level. But we'll see how it goes. Both teams, I think, are in strong contention, and I'm really impressed by the Australian teams throughout this the, the first quarter of Super Rugby. They've all stepped up quite impressively, and a perfect year to do it in the World Cup year. So let's see how that goes. Moving on to the Lions playing the Jaguars. Um, great game. Tries galore. Always fun to watch. 
Although sometimes you've got to wonder, if there are so many tries, what went wrong? I mean, both sides let them th were, were leaking like a sieve in the second half. Obviously, I feel the Jaguars, the Lions, in my opinion, they were the better team for sure. They put it on the board. And what impressed me most is a lot of the team was rookies. They had quite, I think they had about six or seven rookies, or almost rookies, playing on that team, really showing the depth of the Lions Foundation, the academy really pr producing some strong players. And I think that is a credit to the Lions, putting such a dominant performance at home for that. That was really impressive. So I'm hoping that they can continue that and really, really show the performance that they can have. Um, obviously, they're going to rue the fact that they lost their bonus point try in the end, bonus point, uh, well, four point try in the end there because of the fact that, that that's just that's just weak, letting down, putting your foot off the pedal, um, as as Swayster Brain said. So Batman getting to 90 but missing the 100. So it's that's a little disappointing from the Lions. I feel that they had the power, they had they had everything in the bag to be able to take it. I mean, at one point they were 47 13. So it's really quite disappointing to see that kind of. Um, slowing down, especially from rookies trying to put their hands up. And I feel obviously a lot of also there's a lot of substitutions about 20 minutes to go, and you've got to wonder why those rookies just broke the uh, the setup and broke the handling. So hopefully that they can look into that and make sure that the more and more players are playing the style they need to keep the scoreboard ticking and not conceding so many tries in the end. As, as there was quite a try fest in the last bit. On the other hand, the Jaguars really showed they don't give up. They always have the never say die attitude, which I'm really impressed with. And I hope that they continue. They really have become an asset to Super Rugby, in my opinion, bringing a whole other style of brute force rugby, something that not even the South African teams can bring forward with a beautiful flair when they uh, once they have an opportunity. So I'm really, it is becoming better and better to see them playing Super Rugby and they're looking at home. Going, going to the game of the weekend, the Bulls playing the, the Sharks, what a game, uh, the Bulls really just going, I feel the best description I've heard so far is it's the Bulls from 2007 to 10 style of play with the take the points when you get them, dominant up front style but also with what, something that they've brought in new is a beautiful attacking play that they had introduced to their, their style last year. Something that obviously a lot of South African teams are starting to employ now, but really trying to open up space. And I'm, I was I was really impressed by the ability of the of our centres, uh, Dylan Sage and Jesse Creel, to actually pull defenders in. They kept on doing it, and Roscoe and Carl Hendricks really made, had some easy points from that. Uh, Speckman scoring two more tries, but those were probably the easiest tries he could have scored in his season. Both were beautifully drawn by Khalan to Jesse Creel, Dylan Sage. So I really think that that was. Um, some beautiful, some style showing how the interlinking of the backline is starting to bring a whole new dynamic to the Bulls backline play that reinforces the strong forwards play the Bulls are known for. So I think that's great. Obviously, another great game from uh, Dwayne Vermeulen. and I think he's topping our tra uh, tackle count. Uh, Scott Britt's really a dominant performance up front. Henry Liedenberg. Everybody really put a beautiful performance in it. As Andre Pollard said in an uh, interview later. The only reason the backs are able to play with the style is that backward, that forwards actually dominating the play, pushing forward on the play. So I am I'm very, very happy that you can see that they understand that and ensure that the whole team as a cohesive unit is doing it. On the shark side, this is a better game for them than compared to the, the Stormers. Uh, I feel that they did have a little bit more loose play. The Stormers submit beat them up and pretty much pushed them that they didn't try anything. They did improve a little bit here, but obviously I think a dominant performance from the Bulls held it back. But I don't think it's all said and done for the Sharks. I mean, there's still a tight South African conference, and there's a lot of games to go. The Sharks have got some beautiful talent and did show some, uh, especially in the second half, show that they have resilience and definitely know how to, um, they don't give up. There's never say die attitude in there. So overall, very good. It's good for, it's, the Bulls obviously now taking a clean sweep of the SA teams. Obviously, the big question mark on the Bulls here, they haven't really dominated outside of Gauteng. The only games they've won so far are inside Gauteng, effectively. What does that mean for the travel? So that's going to be the big question mark floating over Puerto Himan and his team's uh, heads. What's going to happen about that? Can they travel? As this is probably the biggest thing. I think the last time the Bulls won outside of the country, not including the Sunwolves, or, uh, is... I think 2016, if I'm not mistaken. So there's been a lot of effort, especially in the. I don't know if that's gonna, how that's gonna change. And what really questions me is the fact that the only game we have lost this season is against the Jaguars, which does put a lot of question marks into can we travel or have we? Uh, do we still have the massive issue? Although winning at home always helps, and that should still push us ahead. Obviously, 
Uh, some some interesting points of the game. The Chiefs definitely. I'm not, I've seen from uh, coaches now that I think that you need to look at maybe moving McKenzie back to fullback, as I feel he is having a hard time at fly up. Maybe a few more games if they're willing to risk it to give him that opportunity, because I think he's a great player. Some of the ton of X factor, but he needs the space, and I feel at the moment he's used to trying to give space and give um, experience. But overall, when it comes to actually play playing and the directing the play. He's having a hard time. He's a great X Factor by himself, but at the moment he's not showing how to give the space to his centers and give the space out wide when it needed and also directing the play there. So hopefully they can figure that out. Either he needs to figure out how to play or in that position or he needs to move back to fullback to give the chance Chiefs a chance in the season. Uh, so the Sharks center Jeremy Ward got a five, five week ban, a five game ban. Uh, for a tip tackle on Roscoe Speckman in the 13th minute of the, of the Bulls game. So uh, that's obviously something we don't want to ever see. It was quite a bad tackle. It is a harsh ban, but I feel that more and more this year they're pushing against making sure player safety is number one, and we cannot argue with that. So overall, I think uh, it is the right choice, but players just need to look more and more and making sure that they cannot, uh, they don't tip tackle when they do, when they're playing the game. Okay, so obviously now the upcoming games. Um, the Chiefs play the Canes. This is... For me, a tough, uh, this is not a tough one for me to pick. Unfortunately, the Chiefs are just not showing any direction. So, And the Canes are consistently pumping out some good games also. And they are massively good at the, uh, in their moves. So I think that the Canes are going to take this by at least 15 to 20 points uh, from what I can see from previous things. And considering the Canes dominance in games, I think that's a healthy bet. The Brumbies taking on the Tars. Both teams have had some shaky season, but overall, but I think overall they're quite strong. So I think that the Brumbies can definitely... Uh, push up there, but I think that the Tars are going to take it in the end, definitely. Uh, not by much, I'd say under five points, but it's going to be a good one. The Jaguars face Stormers at home, Stormers playing at home. The Stormers definitely, um, I think that they've improved their season and changed, they, they've brought this, this uh, the, all of a sudden their season is looking a lot stronger than it did in the first week, but the Jaguars are a dominant side, and I think they're going to want to bounce back from that beating by the Lions. So I think the Stormers can pip it at home, though you never count the Stormers out at home, but it is going to be a tight fought battle. And I think the, the Jaguars are going to hold them back a lot more. So I'd say also just under five points, even not more like three to four points in that game. The Sunwolves Reds um, is a bit of a, a not sure game. The Reds are playing well. Uh, they had a little bit of an error prone game, but I think that was definitely due to where they were playing. And then and the, obviously the, Sun, the Sunwolves themselves are moving ball amazingly. They've got some really strong players. And I think they're showing that they... On the, or most, a lot of their players are players who couldn't make it into other teams who are now showing their dominance. So I think overall, there's a lot of excitement coming there. So that one, that's a tough one to call. Um, I made the mistake of going Sunwolves Blues when I went for the Sunwolves Blues game. I went Sunwolves, but I think I'm going to try it again. Um, I'm going to give them another shot at it. I think that they definitely deserve it considering the growth that they've had in their game and the skill that they're putting forth. So I think the Sunwolves are going to, uh, I'm going to put the Sunwolves, especially considering they're playing home effectively not really but homish um against the reds i think that this, the, the Sunwolves will take it by i'd say seven eight points definitely Sunwolves have definitely got it in their tank they just need to make sure they show up on the get on the day highlanders crusaders what a game um considering the crusaders dominance i think the crusaders will definitely take it but it's going to be a hard fought battle similar to the canes um obviously the crusaders uh there's a lot of question marks on the Crusaders when it comes to, well, obviously when they played the Blues in the beginning of the season, it wasn't a dominant win, but they are continuing to grow, so I think that that growth will just get into this game. And I think the Crusaders will take it by about 10 to 15 points there, because they just are so dominant. I don't think anybody's really shown a crack in their armor, and I don't think anybody will in a while. Uh, on the other hand, the Lions-Rebels game, I think that wins the Lions game. Obviously the Rebels are technically the only other unbeaten team behind the Crusaders with a game in hand, but they are unbeaten nonetheless but the Lions are a force at Ellis Park and they showed it against the Jaguars yes there was a hiccup against the Bulls the week before but that is that is part of it I think the Lions have got a strong team and are just growing throughout the season they just need to get consistency behind their name now and I think that they definitely want to do it continue to win at home and continue to be strong at home so I think that they will take it not by much though I think it'll definitely be under 10 points probably six to seven probably around there point game, especially considering that the, the Rebels are playing quite a beautiful brand of rugby, and with Cooper and Wilgenia there, they are scary to face up against. So let's must see how it goes. 
yeah, that's the that's the wrap up of the last week and the upcoming games. I'll bring out another video uh, just following the same format going forward. But yeah, thanks guys, thanks for joining me. Please uh, subscribe, please share, please like, and yeah, comment if you have anything else to say. Cheers.